Good morning, Bardstown and Nelson County, and welcome to Bradford and Brooks. Jim Brooks and Margie Bradford are with you this beautiful sunny morning in downtown Bardstown. Margie, how are you this morning? Well, Jim, I, I'm doing pretty well, except I'm a little upset this morning. Um, somebody came by and took down and stole my, my political sign, which I didn't think was very nice of them. Now you had the like the large one, didn't you? Yes, I did. That's the second time it's been attacked. The first time they just took it down and wadded it up. Hmm. Uh, I got it put back up and uh, sometime during the night somebody came by and and took the whole thing, So, uh, which I am reporting to the police, by right, the way. Right. Well, th I, I don't follow Facebook much, but I know there's a a lot of that sort of vandalism and uh, going on with political signs. Well, it's it it, it gives politics a bad name uh, because that's really destroying someone's right to the First Amendment rights. Right. Well, to it, be uh, able to express their political opinion. I don't go tearing anybody else's signs down. Why should they tear mine down? Well, I'll. I'll um, you know, we, we could do a show on that. Well, we you know, could. We, if it keeps up, we probably will. It, uh, <laughs> and it's really, I don't know why somebody wants to spend their time to do it. I mean, either. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Um, we all have a right to support, you know, the right. candidates that we wished, you know. Exactly. And, and they wouldn't want anybody tearing their signs down. No, so. No. And it's not really the monetary value. It's just the aggravation that somebody felt it was so important to vandalize or remove a sign that they stopped a car and got out in the middle of the night to do it. And and it's and I'm on a busy street, very well, busy. Yeah, you are. I, I, I'm surprised somebody stopped to do it on, on well, that street. They did. Believe me, they did. <laughs> well, I've, so got, I've got the empty sign post there to <laughs> prove it. <laughs> well, some people are have been putting up cameras to watch their sign. I am I'm considering that. Well, I uh, well we how many weeks away are we now, Margie? Four something like uh, four. It weeks. seems like an eternity, but <laughs> it's about four. Uh, yeah. 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 It's so, about, uh, it's it's a little over I mean it's about four weeks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it's it's sad we have to resort to security cameras on political signs. You know, it, 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 really it, 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 re it really is, but I mean, I've been in, I've been, uh, I've been uh, politically active for a long time, working for the candidates of my mm -hmm. choice, with other people working for the candidates of their, their choice, choice. Right. and I, I've never really seen anything like this. I mean, you know, we, we would, we would agree to disagree, support our our candidates mm -hmm. and uh, you know and then when the it was all over with shake hands whoever was elected was elected and too bad try again the next time right right so uh i i just have a hard time understanding the reasons that people would do that well i think it, it speaks to the level of um i don't know um meanness um, you know that people are so involved in their in the political discussions and that they're willing to uh, infringe on somebody else's right you know and I I don't know I think uh, I being a Republican I hate to say it but I think it kind of um, it stems from the candidates themselves I I think it does because they, you know, well, we could we could devote another. Yeah, show we could to do that. we could do a whole show on. Yeah, that we've show. got a. But a, anyway, I am reporting it to okay, the police good. because because I, I mean I I I let I let it go the first time. Right. Uh, right. But it, it it is just something that needs to be reported to police, and and I'm going to do everything I can to to catch who did it. Right. All right. Uh, well, Margie, we have a very special studio guest with us today, uh, Ms. Diane Berry. And uh, Diane Berry, you represent the second, is it second? Yes. Okay. Second uh, magisterial district in Nelson County. And uh, she told me before the show, this is your 12th year. Yes, sir. As a board member. As and, a board member. And, um, and it's, uh, I, you know, uh, sometimes I wonder why people want to be board members, you know, <laughs> but, you know, in, in past years, sometimes it doesn't, it's, it doesn't draw a lot of people in. It's, there's no big salary. 
<laughs> you know, no paid trips uh, let, to let, Las let's, Vegas. Let's put it, no salary. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. right. right. I mean, uh, uh, and really, it's it's uh, you're working on the behalf of the taxpayers. Right. You know? Exactly. Um, and it's there's not a lot of rewards there. You know, and you know, and, and I think uh, both districts generally have uh, benefited from people who are have an interest in improving education who mm-hmm. want to be on the board. Mm-hmm. And that's the that's the goal. Well, that that's been. Uh that's the that's the gold standard. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Well, Diane, tell us a little bit. I mean, of course, I mean, I covered uh, school board for for a while. Yes, you and, did. And uh, we'll just uh, give you a chance to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself um, and um, why you want to return to the board. Yes, Jim. Uh, to begin with, I'm a product of the Nelson County Public School System. Mm -hmm. That being said, I've worked in the system in all three phases, elementary, middle, and high school. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I've been six years on the board of directors of the Kentucky uh, School Board Association. Mm -hmm. I also serve presently appointed uh, to the Educational Professional Standards Board. That's a mouthful. Yes. (laughs) EPSB. And I serve served at uh, different phases when the kids were in school. Uh, they graduated from the county system. And also when I worked almost 15 years in the Nelson County school system, like I said, at all three levels. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed it. I enjoy, I enjoy seeing the kids graduate and what is their future? What do they propose or what do they think they want to do? As mm-hmm. opposed to what they th- know they don't want to do. Right. So um, my, I want to return to the board. I want to continue our our uh, educational uh, endeavors forward, uh, including college, mm-hmm. as well as a work. And um, I, there's just a lot of, we need to finish our job. We need to work on it harder. Uh, the um, We talked before the show mm-hmm. uh, how education has changed since, you know, I was in high school. <gasps> And, um, you know, I, I tell my son, even my son, I tell him what's going on. And he's like, I'd like to be in high school again, you know, because, you know, I talk about, well, of course, that's 40 years ago when I was in high school. And all the opportunities uh, our young people have in, in education and pathways. And I tell my son about it. And he's like, I'd like to go back and, to take advantage of that, you know, because, I mean, uh, education is kind of a, uh, it's a moving target. You know, and it, it evolves quickly. Yeah, very quick. And um, it's, uh, I don't know, I think we have, uh, I think our school systems here are really uh, quality, well, quality uh, places for quality education. Yes. Uh, I know in, in the county system we have five different uh, avenues that these students mm-hmm. can take. And one of them, the first one is collaboration, mm-hmm. which the kids go to different places. You can go to ETCT. Mm-hmm. You also have, we also have online learners. Uh, we have work-based study, of course, and then we have what they are calling micro schools now, which involves uh, a group of students going somewhere and a concentration on mm. that certain subject. Mm-hmm. Um, I've enjoyed going over to the ATC, and you're talking about robotics and those kind of wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful. They uh, last school uh, year they went to we went to Moorhead to s- compete in the state. It was just amazing. I couldn't get over it when I, I said, "You kid!" I mean, they're kids doing this mm-hmm. work that these grown ups do. Mm-hmm. What what we consider grown ups, college kids. I, I was just floored. I was floored. It was a great place to be. Uh, I love the ATC. I think it's very important that we. Uh, you know, we got a grant from the state, ten mm-hmm. million dollars, yeah. and uh, you can see the fence fences going up out there. I, I just think it's golden opportunities we have for these kids, mm-hmm. and the more that we can help um, uh, escalate that higher and higher, mm-hmm. uh, that's what I want. The uh, my, now my son years ago was when he he went to the ATC for a computer. Um, what a computer repair and computer science t- sort of stuff, and uh, the cl- the classes at that time uh, participated in the, an annual robotics contest at Western, and um, it was it was fascinating to watch as a parent because these kids had to solve 
problems and the creativity and unique ways of thinking that they brought to that was just you know it it wasn't um, like study a book and, and we'll do a test next no. week I mean this was critical thinking and problem solving and and, and they had that opportunity to, and collaboration among themselves mm -hmm. you know what's the best idea how do we do this because the uh, in the robotics competition, for those who haven't seen one, uh, they're given different tasks that their robot has to be able to complete. And uh, I will tell you that the team my son was on, they did some, talk about thinking out of the box. It was amazing the, the ideas they had and implemented and were successful with. Because I think the, the, the one year he, he went down, he was in the, the tutor team won first place, and I think it was second place the next year. But, uh, and then, of course, they're participating in teams from all over the area. And, and, and seeing those guys and how they, you know, everybody looks at a problem differently. Yes. It was, it was amazing. And, of course, that's kind of echoes real life. Yes. You know, we all go in part of an organization. You all have your, everybody has their own idea or ideas to share on how to reach the same goal. Yes. You know. I, I just noticed when I went in the classroom, it was a group of students and they were uh, asking each other now how can we improve this or mm -hmm. how can we do this I think it teaches you to be a part of a team mm -hmm. and even a leader you know mm -hmm. people we figure out like they put, used to put groups together and you did a um, you know presentation, presentation. and yeah. and there was always the one that you knew was the leader mm -hmm. you know because and nobody and everybody knew it you didn't mm -hmm. have to stand there and argue about it you knew who your leader was and you looked to that leader mm -hmm. and then they mm -hmm. they uh gain perspective on how to engage with a group of people mm -hmm. yeah yeah that uh, my, of course it, now even in college my son's in programming classes he usually they're involved in team mm -hmm. in, doing work on a team dividing responsibilities mm -hmm. and uh, oh I tell you the worst thing ever happens to him is he has a partner who's not pulling their weight <sighs> I mean, he he calls me up at night in frustration. He's like, Daddy, I can't do anything with this guy. He's not pulling his weight. And I said, well, you know what you have to do? You, if he won't do it, one of you all is going to have to pull, pull, you know, pick up the slack. I know you don't want to. It's not your job. You know, but I mean, that's, that's real life. Mm, it is, yes, it is. I mean, sometimes you have that situation. Uh, same has happened to my kid that they would come home, Mama, what in the world? And I'm going, uh, Courtney, you know what to do. <laughs> That's just the way it is. That's yeah. life. Exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly. Well, um, now, Diana, let's talk a little bit about the recent past, if, if that's okay. Okay. Um, I guess uh, since, what, early 2023, there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of debate um, on, the, on the board. And I think the... Uh, the board, uh, basically around community campus. Of course, th this is going back. You know, community campus began what 2021, yes. and then came to the board in 2022, Two. and then uh, and then the new board members came on in 2023. Three. Yeah, um, and you have taken an incredible amount of heat. Yes, sir. For the decisions you 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 made, and uh, and and you know, there's I don't think there's any good way to you know be to uh, some decisions people aren't going to like anyway, you know, and that kind of comes with the job. But uh, you've been um, um, adamant about uh, where you where you stand. Yes, sir. Um, now, and I, what I really want to do is ba jump from that. To, I know that uh, um, just how things are going on the board now. Uh, you know, what are the relationships? Has it improved? Because, um, I mean, ultimately your goal as a board member is still moving, pushing education forward. There's, that, that's, that's a constant. That is what we do. That's mm -hmm. to make sure our students re deserve the best education that's afforded to them. Right. And um, right now, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'll be honest, right now it's sort of, we're waiting. We're waiting because we have uh, New Haven. To develop, right. mm -hmm. uh, we also have the ATC mm -hmm. in development, and we have New Haven School in development. Mm -hmm. So we've got three we've got three projects going. So we don't want to overload. Right. You know, you can only bond out so much. You right. can only do so much. You can do. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna, and everybody's getting along. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, as mm -hmm. far as we're just waiting for the right time to for our next step. Right. Yes. Well, I guess those 
you have to get those projects underway or yes, completed. Yes, uh, What's Is there a completion date anticipated for the ATC remodeling? Well, I wish it had been done tomorrow, but <laughs> it's not going to. Uh, I'm not sure what the timetable okay. is simply because it's, you know, how construction is. The well, weather and how fast we got started, which, you know, there's a lot of, I would say, not that I've ever built an, onto an ATC or anything, but I would think it was going along. We haven't heard any hiccups yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten any yet. No change orders yet. No, not yet. <laughs> I look for them to come. Yes. Well, they're kind of... Uh, uh, kind of inver uh, yeah, inevitable. You know. Yeah, at every project. Mm -hmm. Every the, project. Um, uh, now, it's encouraging that New Haven's finally getting some attention. Oh, yes, sir. And that's a great, great move. It is. It, they've deserved It's been on that list for 20 years. And what are they doing? Uh, they're reimagining the school to be a P through five, mm -hmm. and uh, the, raw, the the students will not have to walk in the rain, snow, sleet, and hail to go over to their uh, gymnasium. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that will be a more than a walkway. I think the plan is to put an office or some kind of a rooms through there, mm -hmm. and so um, that'll give that school some breathing room and some just. A school, it, but it does it go to the fifth grade now? Or it goes to yeah, yes, ma'am. Because we moved the sixth, seventh, and eighth to mm -hmm. Old Kentucky Home Middle School, and that relieved um, New Haven to add preschool mm -hmm. and anything they and plus they may have an extra mm -hmm. room for some kind of other program. Right. But I went down and uh, I went to New Haven and I talked to uh, the principal and we I took a little tour and it seems like it, it'll really work really really well for those students that didn't and crowd, teachers. Crowd them up at the other school having adding that, that number no, of students. Got to, uh, we put Boston Middle School at Old Kentucky Home, too. Mm -hmm. That school holds 711, and there's only a little over 600. So they had a whole hallway empty last school year. Mm -hmm. So New Haven needed the help. Uh, Boston was overcrowded. Right. So I said, that's it. We're going to put these kids over to Old Kentucky Home. And from what I understand, it's gone great. It, I have not had one complaint. Mm -hmm. There's enough students in the school now where you can mm -hmm. offer those advanced classes or those students feel like they're getting uh, all the education advantages that we can give these kids. Mm -hmm. And that's what they need. Well, that was kind of the point back when they were talking about community campus was a greater number of kids together can get uh, ac have equal access to all the education mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, you know, I, I didn't really think about it. I knew that uh, the board had voted to, to move those kids to OKH. But, uh, well, I'm glad that's working out. And because it was necessary, really, you couldn't do anything in New Haven with uh, without moving those Mm -mm. Students. No, we couldn't, and we in Boston, the kids were in the hallways. Right. I mean, I saw kids, little little ones, in the hallway, uh, and in the lunchroom. Mm -hmm. So it was best to go ahead and move those kids out, so they've got plenty of room at Boston. Uh, the community campus wise, um, uh, my problem with that is that school can hold a thousand. Okay, at the time when that community campus was even spoken of. Uh, there was two high schools less than full, 60%, mm -hmm. 67% uh, or less. Uh, I want to use, and I'm thinking, why do we want to do that when we can put kids to fill the school and save the taxpayers money, and yet our students will be in a place to, uh, they will have enough uh, uh, in a class to hold a class. Instead of six here, seven here, and, mm -hmm. you, you know, you mm -hmm. just need to use, I felt like we need to use the the space that we have available. Uh, we can use that money for something else. Uh, I'm not in favor of it. I, and I have, I voted back in 21, mm -hmm. no. Uh, I'm not. I think we need to use our resources we have now. Uh, then if we have a big spurt of growth, we'll deal with it then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, having been a school board member. Yes, ma'am. I remember. Uh, I know that you, but you really do need to plan for down the road for for your increases. I mean, but and you know that they takes, and that takes, you know, really studying it and, and getting into it. That I, I, I just. 
have a feeling that way that you need to and, and and construction costs are less now than they will be down the road. I mean, right. it's a given. Everything's going to cost more as it goes down the road. Uh, yes, we found that so, out really quick yeah. when when the cost went to like forty million or thirty five million, which well, started out to be twenty or nineteen. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, it, that's well, just the way it is. Everything you know, goes the, up. The pan, well, the pandemic, pandemic. Ex mm -hmm. accelerated that because yes. of supply line yes. issues. Yes, and so that was that made a big difference. Yes. And with these, and the thing that I say now that I want, I wanted people to understand in a meeting is, you know, when they're adding one high school, let's in the future one high school, oh, Nelson County High School will be at one high school and hold fourteen about fourteen fifty. But you don't hold those many kids every day. Right. You've got those five, five extensions that those kids won't be at school. Right. If you. If you take your attendance, let's say Cardinal Crew or 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 out to Thomas Nelson, mm -hmm. there the houses, you take that uh, attendance, you take lunch attendance, or you take sixth period and seventh period out at the Thomas Nelson, you're not going to have. You, you can you can throw cartwheels down the main hallway. That's how least the kids mm -hmm. are. You look at the parking lot mm -hmm. when you're allowed to drive, and there is not a whole lot of cars. The kids are doing their thing. And that's what you want, but mm -hmm. there's the money. It's it's using our resources that we have now, instead of creating, uh, you know, millions of dollars that all um, that's a burden on. Well, look at your tax bill now, mm. <laughs> or maybe not look at your tax bill. <laughs> I don't like looking at it. No, I now. don't like looking at mine either. But almost six hundred dollars of mm -hmm. mine is school tax, mm -hmm. and you think, gosh. Come on, we've got to be more resourceful. We've got to use what we can to to make it work, and I think that's a better way. Well, Diane, the uh, uh, the General Assembly, what well, year before last, uh, voted to allow the uh, bourbon industry to <gasps> to um, allow the bourbon. Uh, tax to go away, and uh, I, I, I used to remember the numbers, but uh, uh, the the county school district uh, was it more than was it right at two million dollars? Uh, a little, uh huh. It's uh, oh, it, <clears throat> yeah, it was it, a lot. And so it was, was so was yeah, but, but not the, as Bardstown's was less, of course, yes. a smaller district, but, but right, but the, yeah, it's a considerable amount of money, right. Um, and I'm sure there have been discussions on, because fortunately, rather than chopping it off one year from the next, uh, it's been stretched out. But still, th that's another pressure right. on, the, on the school budget. And, you know. And we have to come up with that money. Right, exactly. Yeah. It, and you're if it does, yeah. If you're not getting it from one source, you mm -hmm. have to get it from and another. And I'm not looking for today. I'm looking right. on years down the road when yeah. it would have increased. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now we're not going to get that money. Right. And yeah. then you think, okay, how can we absorb that money, that loss in our in our district? And it's it's, it's going to come from the local. Yeah, local. It's going to come we, from the gonna, local tax base. Yes, ma'am. It sure will. Now the uh, and I, I, in most cases, uh, the school districts. Well, like a lot of entities, uh, they're limited to a 4% uh, revenue increase. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, from my past, just, you know, covering school board, a 4% revenue increase barely, it may not even cover uh, the increases, the normal increases, step raises right. and other expenses, because we know how much more, ex more how much more expensive things it's are. It's the now. floor, not it's the floor, not right. the ceiling. Well, it was intended to be the floor, right? But it's pretty much been the ceiling, mm -hmm. right? But um, it, that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed yeah. to be the floor. Um, but but anyway, that's that's just one of the pressures on on uh, the school board and, and budgeting. And um, I will tell you, and I've told other people this, the. Uh, uh, our local school districts have finance people in place who can explain finances uh, reasonably well that even a journalist like me can understand <laughs> understand it. Now, now sometimes you get they get down in the weeds and it's like, uh, you know, like uh, I couldn't explain how the seek formula works. Well, nobody, nobody else can nobody either. Nobody can explain how they the seek well, formula Yeah, no works. one else can either. <laughs> All we know is if it increases or decreases, and then we have to make up the difference. Yeah. Right, and mm -hmm. and uh, in the from 2008 till now, and I don't know about the last year or so, but 
uh, the amount of uh, the, the school district's budgets um, as far as the balance between state money and local tax money, uh, years ago the, it was you had more state revenue coming in, and now it's exactly the opposite. And districts require more; mm -hmm. uh, and the more their budget is, comes from the local tax dollars. And what does the Constitution say? Well, I can't quote it, but it's well, I can't quote it either. But it's our responsibility. The state's responsibility it to is make sure state. yes, it is, a, it is the two, states. Yes, it's the states, and they're not pulling well, their weight the, either. That's the reason right. that yeah. the, uh, yeah. the the 1990 law came mm -hmm. about because mm -hmm. they were sued by local school districts that uh, that were receive were receiving very little money. Uh, in regard to other school districts because they didn't have the tax base. And so the legislature lost that battle. And it, and uh, what they did was uh, use it to not only, I mean, used it to the advantage, really, of the whole education mm -hmm. system to try to equalize that funding. And, and came up with a lot of other things like the friskies and, uh, you know, ways to help students who are struggling mm -hmm. and who are, don't have the same socioeconomic advantages as others. So I always said if I, if I ever lost a lawsuit, I'd hope I'd lose it like the state legislature did. Well, I, I went to a summit uh, for students with disabilities and as you well know there's different programs there is more than I thought uh, of these programs there's got to be eight different programs that these kids can be entered into mm -hmm. the, as soon as they're identified with a 504 or 10 you know as long as they're mm -hmm. identified and I was just amazed that because we don't know about that no we, we don't know about that we're we're hopeful that we can use those programs yes we can mm -hmm. but we have a district person and we have a school person mm -hmm. and um it's amazing I, uh, we i had no clue mm -hmm. i knew two, three of them but i didn't know there was so many of them mm -hmm. so i've learned a lot in that at that summit last week all right, we need to take a break right now for some commercial messages. You're listening to Bradford and Brooks and Margie and I's special guest, Diane Berry, uh, who represents uh, the second magisterial district on the Nelson County Board of Education. And uh, on the November ballot, uh, she and uh, others will be seeking either election or re-election. And uh, we will be back with our conversation with Diane in just a moment. So please stay tuned. All right, you're back with Bradford and Brooks, Jim Brooks and Margie Bradford, and our very special studio guest is Diane Berry. Diane is the, uh, represents the second district on the Nelson County Board of Education. And um, Diane, if it's a, well, I wanted to ask you a little bit about more recent events. Um, the, uh, uh, and I don't remember the timeline, but uh, uh, the board uh, wanted to remove the superintendent, and I can't remember how many how many months ago that was, but um, the the uh, interim commissioner of education uh, didn't disagreed, and so I, my question is, uh, I'm wondering how how, were, how the relationship between the board and the superintendent has been because that can be critical as getting things done. You know, uh, uh, but I was just curious if you give just from your perspective, not representing or speaking as a the whole board, mm -hmm. but uh, you know because there'd been like you know going to the board meetings, you know sometimes the comment period would last extensive, you know and you know and you and I remember when sometimes no one was at a board meeting to speak. Yes. You know so. Yes. Uh, but anyway, I just just carry just. Wondering how how that relationship is going because I know it was contentious uh, for a while. Yes, Jim, I think it's going really well because we have dropped that issue for right now, mm -hmm. and we're we're trying to make the three the three bills we've got going now the best that we can do. Mm -hmm. And I don't anticipate any problems with any of that. Uh, I think we, uh, you know, we're we're. We're to the point where we want to do what's best for our kids and not sit there and talk about stuff that has nothing to do with students. Right. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to turn the rest of the stuff off after they get through with open comment, mm -hmm. and you've got to carry on. 
and I think we've done an excellent job in that. Right. Yes. Well, excellent. The uh, now, and again, I, my my timeline in my brain's a little fuzzy, but uh, there, at one point, the board decided to shorten the comment period because it was going, I don't know, more than two hours. Yes, sir. Um, and which made for some extremely long board meetings before you could even get into the heart of what you all were trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, is that still the case? Uh, is there a limit on public input still at the board meetings? Uh, yes, sir. The law, our rules are, the law is 15 minutes and we're given 30 because that way uh, you have to sign up through the website mm -hmm. is what I understand. Uh, I think that's plenty of time to us standing there. If you recall, the first two or three, no, the first six months, mm -hmm. we were there for one time two hours mm -hmm. and uh the state says wait a minute you know because somebody was watching somebody was mm -hmm. watching and so um i said that's enough we we can't do that we we just can't do that it's not right you know because they were getting up and saying virtually the same thing and i don't have a problem with that you've got a voice mm -hmm. you use it but let's do it let's do it at a a, a time a timely time and, and 30 minutes now what it is generally the as Margie as you well know your your um, chairman of the board rules the mm -hmm. meeting mm -hmm. and when I got it was my turn to be chairman I asked our lawyer I said we have to do something here because it was mm -hmm. get, like you said rather intense mm -hmm. uh, so he said Diane mm -hmm. you can do whatever you you carry the meeting so we uh, asked the policy at mm -hmm. KSBA, mm -hmm. and she said, whatever he says goes. So we cut it to 30 minutes, and it's really worked out well. I mean, there's there's not as many people getting up and saying things, uh, making comments, open comments, but mm -hmm. um, I think it's helped from uh, mm -hmm. We've got the meeting done because some of our meetings are long. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it is. And it but puts still, us, people still attend. And t people still attend. And, can, mm -hmm. and if you want to say something, you can turn it in to the secretary and they will put that on in, in the minutes mm -hmm. that you, what you have said oh, or want okay. to say. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Your your tenure as uh, on the, as board chair, well, I, I don't think anybody could envy that. I made it through. <laughs> you did. Yes, you did. Um, and, and you know, I just remember cont how contentious things things were. But uh, but anyway, I, but you uh, you would you do well? Of course, the chair position kind of rotates. Yes. Among the board, mm -hmm. uh, will you do it again if asked? Mm -hmm. to? You have to get in there with them. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get in there with them. You know, I I know people are really. Uh, uh, you really are challenged, not challenged, but you you love what you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, everybody has a stand that they want to take on right. a subject. Everybody, mm -hmm. you give them the give them their voice, let them say it, and then you have to do what's right for students. Mm -hmm. It's not just you know, mm -hmm. and we have to keep our teachers. We need to retain our teachers. Right. Uh, we have uh, personal development that needs to be done that the state has mm -hmm. cut. We've mm -hmm. got things that they've cut for teachers that yeah. you've got to make those teachers feel welcome and feel like we want to keep them too. What um, uh, is seeking to return to the board what uh, if, if you could wish things into existence what, what do you think what's the district need do you think uh, that the board of course it sounds like you all have a full plate with construction projects already mm -hmm. um, are there other needs you think that uh, that would be nice to be able to to meet or address you know as uh, board yes Jim that's a good one I, I like that uh I think if when we get these projects done, there's a lot of uh, updating at the high school. Mm -hmm. uh, County, we cannot yeah. we cannot uh, keep that just saying. Okay, we've got to do that. We've got heating, air, mm -hmm. bathrooms. Right. We have classroom. They need new desk. You need a new 
system I walked in one room and I heard this boom and it was the heat and air it was the heat coming on mm -hmm. I'm going people you know come on people we've right. got to update that school yeah that can's been kicked down the road and too, too many long. times yeah. but we are I am not in favor of putting 80 million dollars a build onto that school and then knocking down the front part the 69 part mm -hmm. I'm not in favor we can make it work mm -hmm. with with the resources we have or can have to get that on get that school updated right Mm -hmm. right. Well, it's I, I can't imagine building new would be as affordable as renovating. You know, I mean, and I guess uh, the, the and I can remember more than a year ago the 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 list of updates that the county high school needed, and it's and it's extensive. But how old's that building now? I mean, it opened in sixty nine. I was going to say 70, but yeah, it opened in fall sixty nine. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's a you know, we have much older schools in this state. In a lot of areas that you, you know, we're talking about 80-year-old schools and 100. Mm -hmm. I've been in them for cheerleading, and they they update. It won't cost $80 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just my fear. I don't, we just don't need to do it. We've got, we've got enough things or items we need to check on our list, mm -hmm. and then and we'll make we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Well, what 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 needs updating besides the oh. uh, air conditioning and the heating and the air can all the bath or the plumbing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, you know maybe put an office in the great hall and and use our space. Uh, mm -hmm. We we uh, it's like your house. Mm -hmm. You know you might redo your house every ten or fifteen years. You wouldn't do it every fifty, but uh, everybody needs to modern um, uh, mm -hmm. modernize. Like mm -hmm. the library now, we we don't use the library. You know, that can be used for something else. Uh, we very few times are in the library because the media center, you have your computer, you have mm -hmm. your phone, and they consider that. I personally like a library. But then I mm -hmm. was raised in the old way, in the stacks at school they, and stuff. They don't and read books anymore. And they don't bring <laughs> They don't read books anymore. They don't read books. You huh? read your You're phone either. or your iPad. You know, some everybody's got a Chromebook in the county, so mm -hmm. you you I, I, you do I that. Need to, you I need that? to cross myself here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Everybody's got uh, uh, you know. Uh, now our problem is, I think there's some spots still in Nelson County where they have to go to a library or mm -hmm. you have to catch the Wi-Fi, but right. it's not impossible. You know, it's not impossible. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I will tell you that. Uh, my wife's been fighting that fight with me since we got married because when she married me, she also married my library. Yeah. Because I have I have my scholastic books I bought in sixth grade, you know, on my shelf now. Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel still near and dear to my heart. Yes. The. Uh, <laughs> what are you oh, laughing at? Mike? No. Well, I, the thing is, I am. I am really happy to hear you say that because I'm not quite that bad, but I do still have textbooks from my nursing school. Oh, okay. I've got Which, textbooks from my college, yes. So, but, but no, I, I'm glad to hear that, that there's somebody who is more deep, who, who's more deeply enshrined there than I am. Well, my wife has been, we've been going, and now we have a, well, we call it the library at our house, and it's lined with bookcases. And of all her books, my books, the kids' books. Um, but she has been working bookcase by bookcase to consolidate. You know, and so, and she'll go through the, and hold up a book. When's the last time you read this one? I'm like, that's not the point. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just have the security of knowing you can go in there and put your hands on that book, get it out, and look it up. Right, and my uh, actually, I have a cousin in Cleveland, and years ago when I first got into journalism, she sent me some of her textbooks, and of course, uh, journalism, and that's going back fifty years, I guess, and so uh, very little in in that those textbooks has changed. Uh, oh, wow, well, yeah, it, the landscape has sure changed, and they're antiques, and. <laughs> But uh, but I, I will tell you that, uh, and I like watching old movies that have newspapers because I know. You know, that's the old way things are done. And, you know, I, I told my wife, uh, they had an open house at the publications division down at Western. And I said, I'm going to go down there and ask them, where's their waxer? Where's all this, name all this equipment that's been obsolete for 20 years, you know. Yeah. And tell them, how can you have a journalism department without all that? Without all that. All that junk. But, but anyway, um, so this is your, how many turns, let's see, 
12 years is three terms. Yes, sir. Three, mm -hmm. So this yeah. will be your be your fourth one. All right. Um, yes. Uh, you uh, you were the subject of I I'll call it character assassination. People were so angry with uh, with your decision not to support um, community campus, and um, but you know. It was all over the I mean, criticism is one thing, not liking a decision, but uh, it got so personal and so vile uh, that I, had, you know, I don't think it was called for. We can we can agree to disagree uh, in a civil manner. Well, I'm not gonna lie, it was tough. It it was tough. It was tough on my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, it was tough. And um, but like I told my daughters, when you sign on the dotted line. It's your job, and I'm not going to quit. You know, it's your job. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I yeah, I remember the uh, uh, they were calling on you to resign and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, you know, that uh, and these were unprecedented things, you know. But you had been your years on the board have been, you know, you, there'd been nothing like this before. No, sir. Um, but uh, and that's kind of one reason I I. I really got tired of all the vitriol and the hatefulness on social media. You know, it was like it's, you know, it's just eating my brain away. You know, I need to, you know, we need to have positive, try to come up with something positive because there's a way forward. Oh, there you know? is. I mean, even if you want to keep, you know, if there's debate over keeping a school open or closing it mm -hmm. or which one, the order that they get renovated, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and there's places for those discussions. Yes. Um, but uh, anyway, um, just looking back, and this is kind of off the cuff, uh, are any decision or anything you would do differently now than in the last, say, well, since uh, January 2023, you know? No. This is, this is a decision that if you sit down and think about it, you know, whether than spending money, mm -hmm. a huge sum of money, which will take us bukus of years to pay back. Right. And what I know is, if you take that kind of money, you can't build anything else right. until your tax dollar, until you have used that money mm -hmm. or paid down on it, or what? Because we still owe. At the time that was brought up, community campus, we still owe thirty million. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You can't just say, "Okay, let's go for it." No, because you're going to put my children, my grandchildren in a situation where they will always have to pay for something, for a huge sum of something, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, no, I don't regret anything. I have never voted against any initiatives that we have, that's come before the board. Mm -hmm. Never. Until that one. Right. And then I said, enough's enough. We cannot we cannot use that kind of money to put people in such a burden. But we have to keep paying our teachers, mm -hmm. you know, with the money we have, we have to keep students moving in the in the direction for which they want to move mm -hmm. you know and that's the point of of a board is your two jobs is to hire a lawyer and hire a superintendent mm -hmm. and other than that we cannot interfere other than in budget wise or something mm -hmm. but that was the only time i've ever said no that's been it and i'm i proud i'm proud i said it um, when a b board rolled with different members, mm -hmm. uh, just so happens they felt the same way, mm -hmm. and then I could say, "Okay, that we're not going to do this." Mm -hmm. You know, you know, when you take a chance on uh, voting on new members to be put in a board, that's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. That's the way um, democracy is supposed to work. So I don't regret anything. No, my husband would tell you differently, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my husband would tell you differently, but I don't. Mm -mm. Will you be taking part in the uh, teachers forum? That's the candidate scheduled? forum. The and, candidate, no, I won't be in town. Teachers, uh -huh. mm -mm. I said teachers. I, mean I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. asked, but I will not be in. T I'm going to represent my family somewhere, so that family comes first. You know. Well, the um, uh, I will say probably. Well, I, the board has had a tough. A tough road to hoe mm -hmm. since January. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been just so much, uh, so much disagreement with the public, and and I mean, one board member had his tires slashed. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, I, I, you know, and I, I, you know, I understand the level of vitriol and 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 it, that comes up at meetings, but that sort of act was just that blew me away. I'm like, really? Why would you? 
what sense does that make? What message does that send? Well, it doesn't send a good message for your kids, for your no. sons or daughters to hear this, and it doesn't send a message at, of cooperation at all. Right. It's just we're setting an example for our kids, and then you, I've looked at them, and they bring their kids to a meeting for a while, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, my goodness, that's not something good that you need your kids to hear right. is the viciousness and mm -hmm. the ugliness, as my mom used to say, the ugliness that's going on mm -hmm. on open comments when you bear down. And, and it's a law. You're not supposed to pick a person now that and you well know too, Margie, you don't pick a person off the board and keep hammering them. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to, the board is addressed as one entity, not five different people, you know. They didn't understand that either until finally we had to say, hey, you can't do that. That's not what we're here for. Mm -hmm. You know, make your point. And just because your point is different than my point doesn't, shouldn't give you the right to, to bear down on a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we have about you know. a minute left. Any th final comments you want to want to give our WBRT listeners? I want all of you people in District 2 to vote. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I, I want to thank you, District 2, for the 12 years I've had. And I look forward to really uh, extending my term on the board, uh, seeking the best uh education we can afford our kids and um, I want to keep continuing to do that and I thank you all right well Diane thank you for coming in today you're welcome uh, we're, we're happy to have the uh, school board candidates uh, we'll have uh, I don't remember our schedule Margie but we will have uh, uh, let's see so I can look that up I can quick. tell you that very we'll have additional quickly. candidates uh, yes coming up in uh, the next, next week weeks. will be Jody Gilliland mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the week after that will be Karen mm -hmm. Lee and uh, but we were not unable to get scheduled uh, Nicole mm -hmm. um, sorry Mil Milburn Milburn mm -hmm. Nicole Milburn because we we couldn't find a date that was she could come right. and that was open for us so yeah. but you know she was given an opportunity early on right but uh, you know as time went by we ran out of dates right well we will have a video of this and the other uh, right. Candidate interviews will be posted on uh, YouTube and Facebook and the Nelson County Gazette. So right. uh, look for those uh, coming up. Thanks for listening, everybody. And that's it for this week's Bradford and Brooks. Have a great week, everybody.